Okay, today we're going to play with the um, fast rise signal output. It's on this board with an SMA connector. So I'm going to take the SMA connector and I'm going to take it to a, a BNC adapter. It's a 50 ohm system. I'll show that to you. So we're going to have to terminate it with 50 ohms before we bring it into the oscilloscope, okay? And we are going to hook it up to channel 4. I always leave channel 4 open. I put three probes on channels 1, 2, and 3, and I always leave 4 open for things like this. So we can enable that channel and we will turn off everything else and we will set our triggering to channel four and now we're all set to go. All right. So uh, once again, it's USB powered, so we will turn it on and uh, we'll come back up and let's see if I can get the glare off of it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so there's obviously something happening. We'll need to trigger on it uh, and zoom in. Yeah, there we go. So it does have a fast rise time and a slower uh, fall time. So that's uh, just like the instructions manual says. Now the instruction manual says that it's less than 200 picoseconds. The rise time is less than 200 picoseconds. So kind of curious how they generate that. We'll take a look at the, at the, uh, at the schematic. But uh, let's see if it really is that fast. We're going to be limited by the bandwidth of the oscilloscope. So this is a 350 uh, megahertz oscilloscope. Uh, oops, I hit the wrong button. I don't want that one. Let's see here. Let's get it nice and big, make the measurement easier. We will then zoom in on that edge. So that's as fast as my oscilloscope can go. So it's one nanosecond per division. So it looks like it's less than a division. But uh, might as well use your measurement tools. We'll do measurement, add. Uh, we will add a rise time measurement. And uh, we'll bring it over here so we can see it. It says it's 730 picoseconds, something like that. Uh, we can turn on the indicator so you can see what it's doing. I always like to turn on the indicator. So that's what it's doing. It's taking... Uh, the 10%, 90% or something like that and um, measuring the rise time with it. So 70 picoseconds. Now it says that it's a 200 picosecond um, rise time. So we're now looking at something that the, the bandwidth of the oscilloscope is slower than the actual edge itself. So this is as fast as the oscilloscope can go. So this is a good way to test the speed of your oscilloscope. So this is a very fast oscilloscope. One way to show that is if I go to um, the four, channel four, we can actually set bandwidth limits. So we could say, oh, instead of being a 350 megahertz scope, pretend that you're a 200 megahertz scope. And so it puts a filter in there and limits the bandwidth to 200 uh, uh, megahertz, and we're getting about 950 picoseconds now. And we can say, no, 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 pretend you're a 100 megahertz oscilloscope. Now it's 1.3 nanoseconds. And so that's the way. So if you had an oscilloscope and it was measuring 1.3, you'd say, oh, that's probably 100. And you could do the math and you could say, oh, that's 100, 100 megahertz bandwidth. Um, and then here's a 20 megahertz bandwidth oscilloscope. Very, very, very slow, right? Um, and these can be used for various things, but we want to have it as fast as it can go, 350, 350 megahertz. So yeah, there we go. So it is doing what it says it's supposed to do, okay? So um, let's take a look at uh, the user manual. And it does say less than 200 picoseconds. And let's take a look at the, uh, at the schematic. Uh, here is this schematic down here. I think I'll insert a picture here so I'll make it more readable. Um, you can see that it uses some ECHL parts. It uses an MC10EL89 uh, uh, as the output driver, and that's actually made to drive coax. So they've chosen a very nice part to drive this 50 ohm coax, um, and it is driving it into 50 ohms because you can see the load there on the on the next to the connector. Um, so. It um, is an interesting device. If you take a look at the data sheet, uh, it looks like it's meant to do some higher voltage stuff. But then if you look at the way it's being used, um, that particular part only, only has a 1.9 volt uh, 
VCC, and it's used in PECL, it's used in positive uh, edge level. Um, so it's, it's uh, z zero to plus 1.9 is the, is the supply on that part. And the part just previous to it that's using the, uh, the Q and the not Q output, um, that's actually wired up to be a minus five volt echo part. So it's interesting, you have a minus five volt part driving a plus 1.9 volt part. Um, so maybe there's some magic there to get it faster than the data sheet, because if you look at the data sheet of that uh, coax driver, it's only like 300 picoseconds uh, typical. So somehow they're squeaking out more performance than the data sheet says. And one of the tricks might be that funny transistor down there at the bottom. So at the bottom of the schematic, you'll see a 337 um, voltage regulator that's generating minus eight volts. So we have minus eight volts, and then we have that transistor, which is acting as a current source. And if you uh, do the voltage and math on that uh, part, you'll figure out that this is a 10 milliamp uh, uh, current drain. So we're pulling down with 10 milliamps. So um, I, I don't know how that speeds things up. Um, it, it is going through some um, Schottky diodes there. So there's definitely some magic there that I don't quite understand. Uh, so maybe some comment below how they believe this uh, circuit is actually functioning. But it, it, does, it does seem strange. Even at 300 picoseconds, it's going to be faster than the scope. So um, even if they're lying a little bit, it's fine. Uh, it's definitely going to be faster than the, than the scope. And this is a good, uh, good tool to be measuring things with. All right, so if you take a look at this down here, uh, the way that I, I figured out this was 10 milliamps is um, this resistor here, it's a 237 ohm resistor. Whatever voltage is across that is gonna set the current through this thing. So how you set the current through that is just the voltage on the top and the voltage on the bottom. This minus eight volts is on the bottom. Well, what's on the top? Well, there's a voltage divider here. You get minus five volts uh, at the uh, base. There's a base emitter drop of, say, 0.7 volts. And then we'll just quickly do the math. Uh, we'll say, okay, well, really, we have 8 volts and 5 volts. So we only have 3 volts uh, three volts across the resistor, but we have that diode drop in there as well. So let's subtract off 0.7 volts. So really, we really have uh, 2.3 volts uh, across a 237 ohms. And if you put in 237, you get a 9.7 milliamps. All right, so this is set up to be like a, a 10 milliamp, uh, 10 milliamp drive, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting part. Uh, it does what it says, and uh, yes, indeed, you can measure speeds of oscilloscopes with it. <laughs>